parallel and perpendicular lines. So, first of all, parallel lines are lines that never meet. So an example of parallel lines might be this one and this one, where these two lines are never going to meet. If we have parallel lines, their gradients are actually the same. So if this gradient is m1 and this gradient is m2, m1 would equal m2, because remember the gradient defines the slope of the line and those lines are sloping in the exact same way. What about perpendicular lines? Well, perpendicular lines, they do meet. Might have something like this and this, where they actually meet at right angles. Even the x and y axis are perpendicular to each other. And if two lines are perpendicular, let's say this one has gradient m1 and this one has gradient m2, when we multiply the gradients together, we get negative 1. You can also, let's say the gradient of this one was 3. The gradient of the other line we can get by doing the negative reciprocal, which means if m1 is 3, you can think of it as 3 over 1, and what we do for our other gradient, so of the perpendicular line, we flip our fraction, so we get 1 over 3, and we change its sign. So if it's positive, becomes negative. If it was negative, it would become positive. Let's have a look at some lines. We've got y equals 3x plus 1 and the line 3x, sorry, 3y, 3y plus 1. Plus x equals 5. Well, no, are they parallel, perpendicular, or neither? And to know this, it'd be imp it's important to first get them into y equals mx plus c form. This one already is, but this one's not. So let's do that with this one first. So let's minus the x over. So left with 3y equals minus x plus 5. Let's divide everything by 3, so that 3 cancels and we get y equals minus a third x plus 5 over 3. And this helps us because we actually we want the gradient to know if it's parallel or perpendicular. So straight away we know the gradient of this line is 3 and the gradient of this line is minus a third. And just from the previous slide, we know they're going to be perpendicular, but let's double check. Well, they're not parallel because they're not equal. And if they're going to be perpendicular, when we multiply them together, we should get minus 1. So 3 times minus a third, think about 3 is 3 over 1, times our numerators together, 3 times minus 1 is minus 3, 1 times 3 is 3, and minus 3 divided by 3 is minus 1. So therefore, these lines are perpendicular. about another example. Let's look at x plus y equals 6 and y equals 7 minus x. So this one is in y equals mx plus c form, just the x and the constant are switched around, but this one's not. So we should change this one to y equals mx plus c form. I'll even re rewrite this one as minus x plus 7. So that's minus x from both sides. So we're going to get y equals minus x plus 6. Now we can easily read off the gradient. It's just the coefficient of x. So this one's minus 1. And again, the coefficient of this one is minus 1. And the gradients are the same. So therefore, these lines are parallel. Let's have a look at. Okay. So this time, we want to find the equation of the line of the line that 
is parallel to y equals 2x plus 1 and passes through one s passes through minus 3 minus 2. So to find an equation of a line, we need a gradient and we need a point that it goes through. We do have a point that it goes through, but we need a gradient. If it's parallel to this line, it's going to have the same gradient. And we can easily get the gradient because it's in y equals mx plus c form and the gradient of this line is 2. So that's the exact gradient we need for our line. And the point that it goes through is minus 3, minus 2. Now we can use our point gradient formula to find the equation of the line. So our point gradient formula is y minus y1 equals m outside of x minus x1 and we know everything we need here. So it's y minus y1 is just minus 2. Our gradient is 2 outside of x minus x1, which is minus 3. So we've got y minus minus 2, which would be y plus 2. We've got 2 outside of x minus minus 3, so it'll be plus 3. Let's expand our right-hand side. So 2 times x is 2x. 2 times plus 3 is plus 6. We'll put it in y equals mx plus c form by minusing 2 to both sides. So y equals 2x plus 4 will be the line that's parallel to this one and also goes through this point. Let's look at one more. So we want the line that's perpendicular to y equals 4x minus 2 and passes through the point 1, 1. So to find the equation of the line, we need a point that it goes through, which we've got, and we need its gradient. But we know, it's we know it needs to be perpendicular to this one. Well, this one's gradient we can get because it's in y equals mx plus c form, so this gradient is minus is 4. So to get the gradient of the line perpendicular to it, remember, if it's a whole number, we put it over 1, we flip it, and we change its sign. So it's positive, so we get a negative. So we have the gradient now of the line we want, and we have the point 1, 1. So this is going to be x1 and y1. And now we can use our point gradient formula, y minus y1 equals m outside of x minus x1 to get the equation of the line. So it's y minus y1, which is 1, m, which is minus a quarter, outside of x minus x1, which is also 1. Let's expand our right-hand side. So minus a quarter times x is minus a quarter x. And minus a quarter times minus 1, well, it's going to be a positive, because negative times negative is a positive, and a quarter times 1 is a quarter. Now we can add 1 to both sides to put it in y equals mx plus c form. So we just get minus a quarter x plus 5 over 4. Mm -hmm.